What's going on, everybody? It's the Love Machine. Right here, my boy Crow. What's up, everybody? I'm your homie Crow. And the real Mr. Homicide. Look who we found on the train tracks, hitting up on the walls, man. Yup. We caught the homie over here heading up. And uh, what's up, Homicide? Uh, how you doing today, big dog? Doing good, man. Right here, just chilling. Appreciate the interview. Thank you guys for having me. Oh man, you know sour love, Mr. Homicide. <laughs> so we got we got a little history together, man. Yup. Tell, tell them what we'll be doing, dog. So, man, we'll be on the sets, Warner Brothers <laughs> Studios, different places, you know, just acting a fool, putting it down, opening up doors for the raza, you know, so you can see more brown faces. Oh, so yeah. that's what we'd be doing. We were uh, doing the <clears throat> the Lakers show, Winning Time. We are working on that for uh, like a few months, I think. Yeah. And then, you know, just doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. So um, uh, let everybody know that doesn't know, but they know. What do you do, dog? Like, um... What, what, might they, what might they see you in, or what do, what do you do that uh, they know you of? <clears throat> First off, I'm a rapper, actor, revolutionary. You guys might have seen me doing marches. We did a march here for the Free the Kids movement a while back. Um, you might know me from, you know, a bunch of different little uh, little projects and shit. You guys might have seen me uh, featured in some stuff also, but A Higher Power, the movie, is a movie I'm working on, and that's, like, my big break. That's something that I'm passionate about, put all my money into it. And uh, a lot of people, you guys might have heard about it. You guys might be confused. Some people say it's American Me Part 2 or Blood and Blood Out Part 2. I heard that. Scarface Part 2, but it's really called The Higher Power. And I have all the actors from all these films in one film together. You know, putting some old school shit together, some 90s shit for the people, um, for the raza. Just, you know, just trying to put us back on the map in a, in a positive way with a, a different twist than Hollywood likes to put on our shit you know they always like to look at the negative and never the positive so oh that's fine man so that's what we're gonna do that's cool homie hell yeah that's that's really cool man uh, um i commend you for that dog. thank that, you thank you because a lot of <clears throat> we need that homes we need more more leadership roles man right people to like take on the charge and, yeah and open those things up homie yeah, yeah that's right and i don't see no i mean there's a lot of people in the game that could do it they have you know money they have you know influence uh, a lot of fans but for some reason they don't want to be leaders so you know i'm i'm fucking do it if i don't see it i'm gonna I'm make it happen you know that so, makes sense on your re revolutionary homie yeah. so it makes a lot of sense dog. that's cool man so you know just trying to open up doors little by little and hopefully you know years from now it pays off and we just keep doing it. and then you see more more movies about us and hopefully this like i said it takes off and if people see the numbers they'll start making more films about us because they're gonna see that's where the money's at. This is what we want to see. Because there's not too many films about you know us, uh, us Chicanos, Mexicans, just like Latinos, Hispanics in general. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully raza, we, right? yeah, hopefully we can open up that that door for raza in a big way. So yeah, oh, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, you just want to act to the collective, you know? Right, right. Add to the collective, put out content. Uh, I agree with you, man. I feel like we uh, we're mm -hmm. underrepresented, and um, you know we just need to represent ourselves. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Instead of having Hollywood do it for us. Yeah, because Holly, man, Hollywood. They have their head so far up their ass. Like I said, I be acting on a lot of shit. And I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, I saw you agreeing, fool. What, <laughs> when's the last time you guys seen like a, like a classic? Like there was a bunch of classics back in the day. Like old Hollywood, they knew what they were doing. The new Hollywood, yeah. they're on that trendy old woke. Yeah. They're on the on trendy the woke, woke the, bullshit. The, the, stuff that no one wants to see. Then they have flop after flop. All their shows, all their movies are flopping. Shitty ideas. It's just, there's a lot of people in Hollywood right now. They got the money. With just bad ideas. Not the vision, huh? Yeah, you got no, the money, no, no vision. <clears throat> no vision. So that, that's why we're gonna put something real out there. And, that's uh, a very bold claim, homie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, so, the, and then you know, just giving jobs to Rasa, opening up doors. There's just a lot of uh, different reasons why I want to do this film. You know, like everyone in the film comes from that street life. I want to represent us in the right way. Tell tell the story that Hollywood doesn't tell. Got it. You know, so 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 it's, so you're saying it's called the higher power. The higher but, power. Uh, so, you know, and then they're comparing it to American Me, Blood In, Blood Out. So I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's about, you know. Yeah, 90s. The criminal, you know, the criminal yeah. vibe or whatever, you know. 90s, is 90s gangster 90s film. 90s gangster film. Mm -hmm. uh, Chicano gangster, because uh, yeah. there, there is a difference. A lot yeah, of people yeah. might not see it. There's a difference between uh, these gangsters of this ethnic group compared right, to right, like right. What, what we do. Yeah, so and, uh, Chicano gangster movie, 90s bringing back that real shit and and like i said we have actors from scarface american me blood and blood out maybe the loca the fucking boulevard nights the list goes on hey, and man, on. i so, can't wait to watch this movie that's so, gonna be cool man so we got all these people and, and they're helping out it's, it's a collective the community that that's a big thing i like doing with my music is uh uniting the people so i united people with my music now with the movie i'm trying to unite the people and i'm not like other people selfish like 
everyone's in this film. When you see this movie, you're going to see, oh, shit, you're going to recognize a lot of faces. Because I could have just did it and said, fuck everybody else. I'm going to do it myself. And My I'm gonna have, people only. Yeah, all these big scenes with all these big actors, just me. Nah, I said, nah, I want you in this shit. I brought the homie in. Everyone, I'm like, you know what, let's, let's all get in this shit together. Because hey, when we all come together, that's how we can make a, a movement of something strong, powerful, that... that you know, will blow up. Yeah, it will, it will blow up. Yeah, that's, that's Freeman. You bring the homie Love Machine yeah. on because, you know, he's been doing a lot of acting himself. Yeah. He's been getting a lot of roles and yeah. proud of the homie right there. Yep. Thank you. So, so <laughs> that's Talk cool. to my agent over there. <laughs> that's right. To the Asian or the agent, homie? Asian. <laughs> the agent. To the, to the Ninja Turtle without a shell. Oh, uh, that's right, talking. homie. Anyways, um, let me play. They talking about you, fool. <laughs> talking about yeah, dopey, homie. Okay. We talking about the man behind me, the camera, uh, homie. Dopey. <laughs> let, let me uh, play a little bit of the devil's advocate. I I, I understand how you said that. Um, you're gonna get homies and put them on the movie, the real gangsters and shit. Yeah. I think if you bring homies on and they're real good actors, they could pull it off. But what if you get a a, a person that's not a fucking a homie, but a real good actor? To play off a part Like for instance On training day The metal metal Of the raza Was Middle was Eastern Middle Eastern Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he so got off man I think I'd rather pay him Than a real homie That can't play the part off Right right No no We're, you know we're not we, Yeah I think we're it, not it gonna, varies dude. Yeah we're not gonna Get no one in here That can't play the part We got we make sure That they can act And that's the good thing You see homies that They, they got the look They have that, that Credibility and they could actually pull it off. So yeah, okay. in general, I'm, I'm making sure this is a good movie. I'm not putting. Uh, Cause it, I'd rather pay an actor. I'd right, right, like, right. You're good, dude. You been, you really been through the streets, but he could act like he's you. What's well, kind of, it's kind of like a Chicano rap, you know? Like you could get, you could have the look, you can, you could have the, the stripes, but you put your music on that shit's whack. Like you got to make sure they have the full package. So that's what I'm doing, making sure you know people got the full package. They could act, and and basically just you know showing them that they could. Uh, there's different ways and shit. So a lot of people have been inspired and, and they tell me, you know what, I, I want to change my life. You know, this shit, it shows me that there's something different out there. So that's that's a good thing to hear when they tell me shit like that. So Who inspired you in rapping? Because you said you rap <clears throat> and you do Chicano rap. And, you mm -hmm. know, I know you dabble in, for you know, songs for the ladies and all this other stuff. But who inspired you growing up? You're like, you know what, that's something I want to do. That's, I'm going to go with that lane now. So... If fly, Not yourself. No, no, no. Someone besides no, yourself. No, no, no. no for, for a lot of I looked in the <laughs> nah, for a lot of people out there that don't know, I used to be a boxer. I was a, a undefeated amateur boxer. You guys might have seen me on the magazine with Oscar De La Hoya when I was like four. Um, you know, so I was doing uh, boxing. So I, you know, go to the, go to the gym, come home, and my brother and his homie used to be in the room rapping and shit. So I used to hear them, and then I, I gave that shit a try. So I would I would say I would give that credit to who got me started to my brother. They call, him, right. they call him uh, C Biz, and his uh, his uh, homie was a Dub P. So shout out to them. I, I started, you know, doing shit. And I think I was like nine, ten, something like that. I started writing my little raps, and then I just little by little stuck with it. And then over time, you know, created a little buzz, and then started uploading my shit on YouTube. And then eventually, like my fourth album, I was able to quit. I, have, I haven't had a job. I don't know how many years already, but I think since like 2016. Just strictly off the fans, off the raza, the people that have been supporting me. Man, and so awesome. I, I used that money to put it in this film. I didn't go buy jewelry and try to look all rich and shit. I, I got all my money. I put it in the film, invested in our community instead of just in myself. Yeah. That's been it. That's what's up. But um, other than your, your, your uh, relatives um, and friends, who else? Um, that you said we're out there that, you know, because I, I, right now I could list off a, maybe a good five that... I grew up listening to and they're like, yeah. they're fucking bad. So, Nowadays, not so much, but back then. Right now, I mean, uh, back, uh, then. back then when I was bumping shit, I was I have to give it to Little Rob. Oh, mm -hmm. You know, Toker from the Brown Side, yeah. Mr. Night Out. Night Out um, <clears throat> those are people that paved the way for me to be where I'm at right now today because they came first before me. And then, you know, it opened up those doors. So but they're actually decent. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, man. Little they're, Rob, they're good, talking dude. from the brown side, fucking uh, Mr. Nida, they, they had a lot of dope-ass fucking songs. And Little Rob yeah. and Mr. Nida both, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I'm pretty sure they both went platinum, if not double platinum, because uh, Summer Nights and a Daddy, Summer I'm Nights. in Love with a Gangster, those yeah. are fucking massive hits. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Another, that's another thing, too, I want people to realize. People got to stop 
being with their heads up their ass. Like me, I have a lot of big songs with a lot of a lot of views, but I don't have no fucking hit. A hit to me is like that, like a summer nights. This is for the Rasa, yeah. Daddy I'm a lover again. Those are actual hits that could change your life, make you a millionaire. If you don't have a song like that, then you don't got you don't got a hit. <clears throat> you got big songs with millions of views, a hundred million, but if you don't have that, even that lean like a cholo shit, that was another that was a hit. That was a hit. That's yeah. that those those just big songs that we we only have a couple of them, but we need more of those. So we need Rasa to come together. It's like start, club bangers, what you say. Yeah, yeah. The shit that they play in the clubs, that, yeah. that's the shit you know you made it. You want to get attention, homie, yeah. I mean, bottom line, but not. Yeah, I hear you. So, uh, so we can do it. The community is very small, you know? Yeah, yeah we, we can do it, though. When we make these songs, pe people don't realize we have a big impact across the world. Like in Japan, we're big in Japan, big in we're Japan. big in, in Bangkok. There's a bunch of places all over the world where our shit's big, and we could we have those numbers to, you know, make somebody like a multimillionaire. People love our shit all around the world, so we just got to continue to make good music you know all it takes is the right opportunity the chance so maybe you know there's a lot of good songs out there that maybe could have been a, 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 a big hit but they just didn't have that push or that support or the radio play yeah and they're still fucking dope ass songs that could have uh -huh. been big so i heard a lot of a uh, couple proper dope songs that i like oh, oh, I mean, uh some, something a bump something uh feeding my high yeah, feed my, yeah homie, yep. they got some good shit yeah exactly uh, you know what dude uh, um we need more shit like that. We need more good music. Yeah, lighter shade of brown. All, lighter, a lot yeah. of, I, I grew up on on that stuff, man. I think I think the raza is the backbone of fucking the U.S. Hip hop. It could be, it could be either hip hop, the working force, all that. Because in reality, who goes to the shows? The majority yep, of raza. All raza. We buy the CDs. We are buying everything. So yep. We just the thing is we don't support our own to that yep. level. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If we were to support one of our own, we'll be in the industry. Man, we would have. The biggest fucking artist out there. We would exactly. do numbers that have, have never before been seen. If we just exactly. if we support each other, man, we can have the biggest movies, the biggest artists. Like yeah. all we need to do is just support each other more. And there's support out there, but we need it on a massive on a massive level. Like, like a good collective, a community. Right, right, right. I think um, I always saw like the Puerto Ricans, you know, like like shout out to them because uh, oh, they, they had all the reggaeton and yeah. they've always been in our movies, homie. They've they always been representing dog a lot. And, and um. In boxing, they've always stepped it up, dog. I've always yep. seen them, and I've always uh, uh, and right now they're really big with like Fat Bunny and yeah. like the whole yep. movement that they've got going on. You know what's crazy is I feel like that's one of the reasons why I try to be different. I try to you know songs for the girls, lyrical, you have spiritual. To, I have a you know like I said I'm known in Chicano rap. I'm a Chicano rapper, but I'm not just a Chicano rapper. I'm you know gangster rapper. I feel like you have to, bro. You gotta different things get out there. I feel like the Rasa right now is too focused on gangster music which is cool but it's like how much can you speak about the same thing yeah. over and over yeah. so we need shit for the club we need shit that people could just bump you know like like you summer know, nights when, when you're having <clears throat> having a barbecue just feel good music we need some yeah, more yeah. feel good music my opinion on that homes is like yeah we we we, we uh then we could blow chicano more. we're too uh we're too uh too macho homie too macho. Not gangster. Just, we're too too macho. Gangster. yeah but then we just we, we we get ourselves in this little corner where like this is who we are and it's how you gotta look yeah, it's yeah, how you yeah. gotta be and right, right. and you don't you you know like like i like little rob when he blew up when he started doing those little hits, bro. right? Like, oh right. shit! Okay, he is actually like, like venturing out outside of I like liked his normal. older shit. Like uh, his older stuff was pretty good. Was I wasn't a big fan um, of him, but he was pretty good. Um, fuck, what's that? His first album, uh, "Do My Thing" and shit. He's more gangster shit, but "Summer Nights" was dope. He has a lot of, but you know, now nowadays he's doing more shit like for, uh, for the club and for the yeah. for the for radio, the ladies. For the but ladies. That, that works out for him too because I do shows sometimes and I, I catch myself finding it hard sometimes to perform songs so i'm like damn i got a lot of gangster shit i feel like yeah, yeah so homie. he has shit that's you could play for the kids you could play for you know people that are dancing yeah. universal basically, yeah dog. you know and he, he opens up with people like brenton wood and oldie singers oh yeah so that's brenton what wood, homie so shout out to brenton yeah, wood, yeah. Homie. Yeah. Yeah. Radio, dog. get out of brenton wood with yeah. Brenton was a dog. <laughs> interview with him huh oh, that yeah. guy is dope, so he's, i've um, seen him at og mike's back in santana that boy used to work in gardena that guy in a, in a factory yeah i forgot who worked with that fool and i was like no shit yeah. hey dog, i was gonna bring up a thing uh uh because i heard it over the, the youtube channels and all that but uh somebody had made a statement that she Chicano rap is dead, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and they named Little Rob as like the king of Chicano yeah, rap, yeah, yeah. and I think it was like Conejo mm -hmm. and King Little G. Mm -hmm. You know, they were all talking about it. But how do you feel about th that statement? Chicano rap is dead. <clears throat> Chicano rap is definitely not dead. I made a video speaking on this. Um, I just signed a deal with uh, Brown Label Entertainment. Shout out to Brown Label Entertainment. That's right. First Congrats, of homie. Thank nice. you. For, first of its kind deal. Um, so I wouldn't say Chicano rap is dead at all. What I think is there's not too many, you know, what, what people, when people think of Chicano rap, there's only a few, like, names that pop into their head. 
like a lot of the people now that are rapping the youngsters like i'm a youngster too but you know they say the n-word you know yeah, the they, n-word's they're, they're, they're right of now. a different culture they might be chicano mexican but they're not in that category of chicano rap yeah, so that's why they're saying it's, it's dead different. but really i'm here and i just signed a deal um where i'm getting like 70 percent of my money they're, they're fucking helping fund the movie um they're, they're gonna help uh, invest in rental properties just a bit, basically whatever i want there's features. money putting in yeah they're putting a gang of money in uh we uh the label just signed a 4.1 million dollar deal there's no other label out there that could say that shit like it don't matter how you cut it slice it or dice it brown label entertainment's the future i'm their first artist they were actually like you know they're entrepreneurs they, they dip and dab in a bunch of things they're the ones i don't know if you heard about a few years ago they made an app for the the street vendors Okay. Like where if a street vendor is getting attacked, they have a thing on their phone, an app. That's Freedom no, Man. Yeah. They're That's trying good. to they're trying to develop an app, you know, so if a street vendor is getting attacked, you you know, it if, if other people let's say we have it, it'll give an alert like, oh shit, street vendors getting attacked, this is their location, like a GPS, you know, so we go help them or something. Um so we could be like a rescue dope. rangers yeah only. so he, he does a Everybody bunch get of get together and fucking let's go activate homes <laughs> yeah. let's go let's go so he does a, he does a bunch of different shit and he you know he invested in me i'm his first artist so we got a song coming out with the brown side and i, I want to put a bunch of dope shit out there like um i can't mention too much of what no, we no, got no. coming next but there's gonna be a bunch of dope songs um I did my last album in 2020, and then I, I focused all my time to this movie. But this year, I'm gonna come back, start putting out stuff for my next album. Uh, at the same time as working on the film, because now I got, like I said, I got extra money, funding um, from Brown Label Entertainment. So shout out to the homie Marcos. Yeah, and, uh, shout out to them we're gonna, again. Man. We're gonna That's come, dope, we're gonna come hard with yeah. it, you know. And and so to answer your question, in, in short, Chicano rap ain't dead. It's definitely not dead. If if uh, if you look at the numbers and you see what people like me are doing, you you, you know that shit ain't dead. That's so, right. Yeah, that's right. I don't think it's that's dead just either. like a homie. That's uninformed opinion. But 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 I kind of like that 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 he said that because now uh, you know it just opens up more uh, attention towards that. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm his hype man. Fuck it. Yeah. You're right there with the He's hamburgers. He's a flavor flame, homie, over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flavored all the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, shit, you know, you're talking about uh, doing. Um, you know, songs for the ladies and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the other day we went and did a show over uh, was it Long Beach? We did a Long Beach Cardinals or something. Oh and yeah, they had, uh, Long Beach Cardinals. Yeah, shout out to the shout homie. To the homie he had uh, the NB Riders on. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, are they considered Chicano rap? What do they consider, bro? I don't, I don't, That's I don't know. That's R&B. I, I, I consider them R&B. Well, I think I think under the Chicano label. I think that one song, the uh, I want to get lost in love with you. I think that was Chicano that's rap. A that's, hit, a, right? that's, that's a hit. All I, the I ladies, all the girls yeah. love that song, well, homie. You know, you dedicated that shit to them. To yeah, the, you know. I say that one. The other ones more like you said R&B, but I think that one R&B group. Yeah, rap would be more well i guess there's i mean chicano and, r&b or chicano rap yeah. but it, but it, it falls in that like you know the chicano all the chicano cholos know about that song yeah oh uh, you know yeah homie i mean yeah. i feel like that's part of the fucking yeah that's yeah. part of your that's uh, like our playlist. version of fucking like ll cool Nate, j had Nate, uh i need love Nate that's like the chicano yeah. version the so that's pretty feeding man i like that shit too that is a dope ass song you know what i mean oh, so yeah. shit like that you know just making trying different things there's a lot of songs like i have on my albums i hear them some people like them. I'm like, ah, it's just kind of corny. But, you know, I'm doing the auto-tune or some of my shit. You just try different things. You never know what's going to work. You never know what's going to blow up either. So yeah, That's true, homie. Look at I, T-Pain, huh? Right? T-Pain fucking Oh, he got up. mad because people bit his shit. He was, like, trying hey. to be the only one doing that. Nah. Everybody start doing that for a second. Quit. <laughs> well, he was falling in love with the strippers, homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he, took he, yeah, he took his money. He took his money. He went he broke. That's what I heard. He went broke. Huh? He said he, he said he didn't know. He was just spending all this money, and then he his I don't know who it was. He called one day, and they said he didn't have no more money left. Well, I heard they're spending his money too. Probably the probably oh, they're, they're doing both. Spe- speaking on, on Chicano rap and everything, dog, and like doing different things. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you would like? Well, I know you do dabble, but mm-hmm. would you jump into like you know, fuck, what would I call it like? With the black homies, you know what I mean, and, and do rap with them. No, anything, you know anything. You know, it's all about doing different things. Like I know there was some drama over, like, oh, we don't sign essays or da 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 or whatever. Nah, but, nah, but I'm saying, like, you know, as yeah. far as like collabing with people and really like, yeah, like, no, no, yeah, um, not listening to that bullshit. Like, all yeah. right, whatever. Homie. Well, actually, I'm supposed to be doing a song with um, Norman Carter from the Dalphonics pretty soon Ooh. after we're doing the Brown Side song. So hopefully, we can get that started. So hey, you know what? That's d- a different good, shit. You know, uh, bring back the, and the see, old try, homies. Trying like different that. shit. <clears throat> man i was in the studio trying over and over like i could get that shit down if i once once i do it enough times but i was trying to do my little fucking uh 
my doo-wop singing and shit. So I'm yeah, trying different yeah. things. Like I said, like You're I- trying to get your Drake on, homie. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I'm, I'm trying to get my Marvin Gaye Marvin on, Marvin Gaye on, shit. homie. Yeah, I hear that, dog. Whoa, so, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sing some little song for us, nah, homie. Right so I, no, I can't <laughs> sing for shit, homie. But that's the thing. I, I can rap. I'm a good-ass rapper. I can't sing for shit. But you know, you do it enough times. You press uh, record. Yeah, yeah. You make it sound Delete good, it. No? You do it over and over. You can get little two, three second clips of you sounding fucking really good. And, all right, keeping that and then work work on the next work fucking little it. piece. That's right, homie. So I'm gonna keep it real. I can't sing for shit, but at rapping. You can make music and though. Yeah, yeah. No, rapping. I'll make a good sound. I'm good at all that shit. Yeah. All right. So um, with with the movie, dude. Um, you said it's gonna be done hopefully this year and then released next year. No, no. no ho maybe. Hopefully this year. Hopefully it's. Um, what, we, what we're gonna do is uh, keep filming. Hopefully it's done this year, and then after post production, we're gonna put it in like. Um, Movie well, shout out to Edward James Olmos, man. Shout out to Edward James Olmos and shout out to Panchito Gomez. At the end of the film, Edward James Olmos, he's going to get on board and help us out get distribution. So I don't know if we're going to put in film festivals and have someone offer to buy, you know, like the, the rights to distribute it or if he's going to help us. But hopefully this year we should all, it should all fully be done. We're about 80% finished right now, about 20% left, you know, to film some final scenes and then post-production with the, the audio, with audio engineering and then have the mm -hmm. person do the... What's it called? It's called the film score, like with like the mood of the film, like if it was seen serious Whoa. or happy, like an appraisal, oh, no, like yeah. an appraisal of it. Yeah, like like, like, like just... if we're talking, that shit's a funny. They'll add funny music in the background or, yeah. or serious oh. music. So they're gonna do the score. Then once that's done, save it and then and just start putting it out there. Man, you, right. you, you seem to be very very knowledgeable in all that, bro. Like you yeah. you have all your steps down and so yeah. you've really been in this. So, yeah, self taught. Uh, self taught. So there's some rumors. I don't know. I guess someone said that I was I went to film school and shit. Now this is all self taught. Sounds shit. like it. <laughs> 100 self taught. That's no, right. No acting classes. Nothing like. Uh, if you got it, you got it. You know what I mean? Just go for it. You know, if, if you have a passion for it, huh? Some people, it calls just, you. some people just got, you know, um, a natural. No. How do you say? Just you know, they got it naturally. You know, God gifted. Some people, they're good. They might need classes, but if you got it, just go for it. Like uh, what I tell people is, if you got a dream, just don't wait on it. Just jump into that shit. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I first started, how much fucking money it was gonna cost, and 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 all this shit. But the the opportunities that's created and all the shit that that's came about since I started this is is it's amazing. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a, I would say a life changing experience. Like now I'm I'm acting in this film as the main character and all my favorite actors that I used to look up to. They're all, they're all my fucking like my co stars that's and shit. Big, like, huh? And and they're helping now. They're they're some of the co producers. So shout out to Pete Vasquez, uh, Angel Salazar, um, and Panchito Gomez. Those are the other uh, three producers and and some of the main stars. You might have seen Panchito Gomez in American Me. He was Young Santana. Okay. Uh, Pete Vasquez is uh, Chivo from Blood and Blood Out. He was one of the Londa members, and he was also in Colors. I <clears> when Colors. Hodgins I pulls Colors, up, bro. and he's like, he's a gang member. I ain't seen any gang members. Yeah. So he and him, and then uh, Angel Salazar, which is Chichi from Scarface and uh, Carlitos Way. Holy hell yeah, homie. All the gangster shit. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. all I grew up on too. Yeah. Eh? Stand and deliver. Now, all the movies. And we're bro. trying to we're trying to show something different too. In the movies in Hollywood, they like to show the, the gangsters as like low level, dumb, stupid. Like nah, man. Like, like the, they the, make it, like they don't make money. Yeah. Like they ain't smart. Like the yeah. OGs I grew up with, man. They're fucking connected. So we're showing like man that the mobs and, and and everything like they're up here with each other, coexisting. Like the reality. Like and if you see Hollywood, they like to put them all up here and the gangsters down here. Like yeah, me and like shit. they're like, being man, used like puppets or something. Yeah, like yeah, fuck that. So don't work that way. And we're gonna show that. Not everybody ends that life dead or in jail. You could change your life. I changed my life. I'm pretty sure he changed his life. Oh, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of people that come from that and they change their life and, and now they're doing positive things. So th that's that's what I want to show that you can make a positive change no matter how deep and far gone you are into that life. There's always a, a, a positive way that you could turn. And Hollywood likes to make it seem like once you go down that route, there's only two two ways. Like, yeah, nah, yeah, you, yeah, there's, yeah. You, got, you always got a choice. There's always a gray area. Yeah, you always got a choice. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's, man. Nah, that's true, right there, dude. <clears throat> Um, so you said it's gonna be done this hopefully this, this hopefully, year. Hopefully, hopefully, yep. So, Edward James almost yours some grilled cheese. That's it. Do you need some actors, homie? Shit, Shit. Um, you need, homie. Let us oh, know. yeah, let, let people know. You know what? I'm trying to get in on this movie. I would, here, say, homie. What's up? I would say follow me, follow me on uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Every once in a while, like let's say there's no openings right now, but every once in a while there's a scene. I'm like, oh shit, I might have forgot something, or maybe somebody couldn't make it for whatever reason, and I'll make a post. Hey, I need two people like this, or I need one person for that. Sometimes it's just you know an extra. Sometimes it's it's actual someone Some with words, lines and everything. Lines. Yeah, yeah that's big. so and I like giving opportunities. Like I said, other people like to say it's all about them. Fuck everyone else. Like nah, there's a lot. I mean, I, I didn't even know this guy. Yeah. I gave him some fucking lines. The homie brought him to him. Like hey, let's get him some lines. Like I'm. 
that's what we got to do help each other out and not be like man fuck these fools like that that's what i see uh, our downfall is a lot of people we do that, that up lot, there homie. they're up there and then they don't start messing with everybody until they start falling off and then now they're doing songs yeah. with this person that person man fuck that i'm gonna do it right now so when i if i do make it up there like like a hope they can say you know that's a real motherfucker helping out the community from the start humble never switched up not not like all oh, that was switched up and you know what i mean yeah he had some ulterior ulterior motive yeah. and shit nah fuck you know? all that shit you know scan this bottle hopefully <laughs> yeah. it, it, it changes his number after yeah he's you. i know yeah. Yeah. like, like <laughs> love machine love machine who uh, nah. <laughs> blocks me on instagram like, <laughs> i don't know this guy no more <laughs> <laughs> hey, nah. me, me and this one well, you were there when we almost uh Vanette, no not vanessa hutchins who is it vanessa hutchins no not that, that's the one from uh high school musical the other one Come by. The one we we tried to crash your party. Yeah, we're at Warner <laughs> Brothers Studios. Man, we almost crashed uh, Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer, Jennifer Hudson. Hudson. We almost crashed oh, really? Jennifer. Yeah, I, I yeah, fucking yeah, Warner yeah. Brothers Studios. That's, man, we went and then we we're like, fuck it, let's go back. We went and that shit was already fucking gone. It was already wrapping up. Like, but we could have went in there. Late, but homie. See, the thing is, they don't, they, come late. they don't fuck with us. The securities don't, but there was like a bunch of security standing in front. So I'm like, fuck, yeah. I, we didn't know, you know, like, fuck, should we risk it or not? We're like, fuck it, let's just go in there. And so I was just going to get on the phone and be like, all right, I'm right here pulling up. We were just going <laughs> to walk in there and it was it was already over. Damn. That's and there was, a, and there was a, the guy from Creed, what's his name? Uh, the boxer. Ah, uh, uh, shit, I can't remember. But, Michael no, B. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah he, he was Jordan. there. Someone took a picture of him. So I think there was a bunch of celebrities there for the party or something yeah. like that. Serio? All right, shit. So, yeah, Warner Brother was fun, dog. We, I love that you, shit. You go in there, dog, you just end up everywhere. We end up in the backstages. It's dark. <laughs> We're fucking scared, yeah. running like hyenas. That, <laughs> that should be fun, yeah, That's just fucking dope, man. I Warner Brother. Yeah, dog, so, uh, you know, all these uh, movies that we've been having all, uh, about, you know, the streets and, you know, how shit goes down which one is your favorite homie like you know we got mm. training day american me we got uh, blood in blood out my four my my top movies are four or five movies it would have to be american me blood and blood out colors me vida loca and scarface oh, yeah. Scarface. those huh? those five those are pretty good movies and right i got there, actors man. from all of those films in, in a higher power hey hey hold this shit real quick doc I'm already holding your fucking gun, dog. Damn, I, I got you. the and I got the backup. Damn, homie, you're a real gangster, dog. <laughs> <laughs> we got the police over here, homie. Make sure you don't get arrested. Homie. That's cool. That's why. That's why you need to do that shit with, with your FFL, your federal firearms license. You know. That's right, homie. Do that shit legally, and then they can't fuck with you. Oh. Hey, and, and we got our homework filling in. Oh yeah, so so we got the, the homie, machine. you know, <laughs> we got the little hater filling in, homie. Oh no, wait, he's not. No, that's a little hater. That's a little hater. That's a little hater. from uh, that's tacos homie. and workout. Oh, that's right. right here, dog. Yeah, filling in for Love Machine because Love Machine had to take a little masa, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, um, I, I was standing by and I was yeah. listening to uh, you know you talk earlier and uh, you said that you're self-taught. You taught yourself how to yeah. do everything. Yeah, that, that's cool, man. Yeah, how long have you uh, been uh, do, doing? Uh, um, I've been doing this shit for a while. Like when it comes to editing and all that shit, um, from my, my own music videos, I started editing my own music videos. Um, like back in high school, like I started with a little fucking HD camcorder and shit, and. Um, Eventually, you know, just keep, kept upgrading cameras, upgrading uh, equipment, fucking software. So now I just, you know, I, I got the hang of shit, you know, editing good, clean videos, professional. Um, and it all stems from me just wanting to do shit solo, independent. I didn't want to have to pay everybody to do videos and studio. So I got my own studio together, got my own, uh, my own movie equipment, uh, studio, uh, video, all that shit. Cause it's, it's quite costly, right? To to yeah. send everything out. Like I, I know that sometimes when we do like uh, events, interviews, or whatnot, you have to like uh, have someone to like do your flyers and right, whatnot. Right. So it kind of it's time come to me, but I guess it pays off once yeah. you finally learn how to do all that if, stuff. If, if you if you see the cost of how much like uh, how much somebody spends for all their videos, studio time, if you just invest yourself and put it in your, you know, into yourself and you buy your own studio, your own, uh, you know, uh, your own, like I said, I started my own record label, got all, all my shit together. And the same thing, I got a movie uh, production company now. I do it on myself, so then I don't have to outsource anything. I don't have to pay nobody. I don't have to wait on anybody. I do it myself. And then I can move when I want, how I want. I don't have to, to like I said, put out all that money. Like, let's say two to three thousand dollars for a video or maybe even five thousand dollars for a video and i could do it myself for free because i bought the camera and you know i just get the locations you know you just invest in yourself i would say is the smartest thing to yeah. do invest in yourself you have your own shit you don't got to wait on anybody and then you can make money in the long run let's say 
somebody wants to rent your studio out they want to rent rent your equipment out now now you could now you could be that person to rent it out so it pays for itself yeah. pays for itself in the long run so 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 you're working on a movie right yeah. and is this your first movie that, my, that yeah. you're that you're working yeah, on? this is my first movie um my first actual like movie like i said I, i've done little videos little skits other shit like that but i, I I've, I've been in uh, the industry long enough I've, I've done some dope ass music videos for myself um, almost all my videos were, were all edited and done by me um, and like like the homie was telling you we're on set all the time so that's like a school you know I, I watch them whether I watch them while they're filming what they're doing I see what they're doing wrong and what I what I could improve on and then I just jumped in got all my money invested in this movie and and it, it over time it's just like I said one person here from this movie and that movie and then uh, other people volunteer the the rasa got involved and it's just like it already paid off tenfold from what I invested, so. And and I would imagine that everyone everybody wants to be a part of it, yeah. right? Yeah, every, and, and that's and, awesome that everyone. And I made all that money that I'm putting in on this film from, you know, Chicano rap. So when people say it's that's dead, good, it's like, homie. hey, homie, you know how much movies cost. And there's other raza out there that, that they got money. They couldn't even afford to do this shit. So I must have made a lot of money to, to make a movie like this. So when they say Chicano rap's dead... They're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, you get. You, I mean, a lot of people mismanage their money, man. Yeah, if you know how to play with your money. Yeah, and invest in yourself, as you said, yeah. in your product. Uh, you know? uh, obviously, you can't. Like I, one thing I learned about Hollywood, and one thing I learned about you know doing the YouTube, the podcast, and stuff like that, is not to talk too much about future projects because of you know whatever you know people might uh, feel that they want to uh, you know do something very similar to to what you're doing yeah. right so i've learned that you kind of have to kind of put a lid on it right, uh, right, right yeah so but i mean with that being said the, i would imagine you have an idea for 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 a, a second movie maybe I, I got some ideas for the second movie um and will you be playing a similar character or no no no, no i want to i want to switch things up i don't want to be a one-trick pony like, like I was telling about the music, you know, you want to switch shit up, be different, lyrical, gangster, supernatural, fucking storytelling songs, uh, love songs. You want to, you want to be. So just like with the music, I'm gonna do the same thing with movies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be different, gangster movies, funny movies, love movies. I'm, I'm gonna do something for everybody. But I got, I had to go with this shit. And horror movies, definitely. Horror movies, huh, yeah, bro. So I feel like we don't have horror movies. Yeah. Bro. So that's, that's, that's what, that's I what I'm gonna work on. Hopefully next, and then next will be a horror film. That horror or comedy. It's gonna be one of those two after this one. Be uh, great, huh? no, that would be funny yeah that so would be good. and then we, we already had like i wouldn't say copycats but ever since i announced the film we've had a gang of films like announcements of people wanting to do gangster films you want to wait till the shit passes that's loud so we've had a lot of people that that announced hey we're gonna do this film a gangster film a bunch of people you know they reached out to me hey we want you to help film this but I, I, I'm not able to because I'm working on this film. But I wouldn't say they're copycats, but I brought that spark back to, to do gangster films again. Because no one, no one was doing gangster films. Then I come out with this. Now everyone's like, now they're announcing this. They're announcing that. And then other people want to do gangster films. But the good thing is no one's going to be doing shit like how I'm going to be doing uh, this film. Because I got all the people, like I said, uh, backing me. The raza, the, the community, the homies, the, the big actors. And, and the, you see real unity. A lot of other films I see, they're only kind of taking care of their people. They're, they're only trying to put their people on. And that's why I feel like shit doesn't work out for them. Cause you gotta, you, you gotta be selfless. You gotta be like a good leader. You gotta bring everyone in. And then let's say we do this interview and then you come up on something, you bring me in. Oh, or yeah. you do, like we all help each other out and that's how we grow. You know, yeah, a lot of people- Networking, man. Yeah, networking. Networking is it's a big thing. I feel like, uh, you know, we got the uh, opportunity that you see now with the Mayans, you know? Yeah. Um, based off the like the the you know the uh, what's that other Sons of Anarchy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What they were spin off, spin off series, spin off, and you yeah. had the Mayans and stuff. And um, uh, you know, I feel like that's how Hollywood works. You know, it, it has one big hit, and then people just milk off that. Right. You know, um, and we always we've always had that gangster mob, the mafia, the fucking the streets. Uh, yeah. You know, um, what would you think as far as a horror film? And not to like give up any game yeah, yeah. or nothing. But just, what would you think would be a good, uh, mm. a good horror flick, homie? So, some of my ideas is like, you know, most of the famous gang uh, horror film icons are all they're all white. So we need yes. some rasa shit. So I'm thinking, you know, something along the lines of like, there's a there's a killer, but he's like possessed by like an Aztec spirit or some shit like there that. Like, I, I mean, like those that, are just homie. one of the ideas, you know, where like it, he has like the the you know the power of like let's say uh, the Aztec god of death or some shit is is in him, and that's 
what's fueling them or something like that you know something to, yeah. to get power to us you know yeah, like yeah, to, to show us and to get the get the little kids yeah. scared of the right, cuckoo right, and right, shit yeah. all over again homie you know i feel like we don't have that anymore homie yeah. <laughs> you, you know it's funny that you should say that because uh not too recently they made la, la llorona oh, oh yeah, that's just, and, and hard, I, I, I didn't even watch it because oh, i'm like this oh, i'm like what, what the hell kind is this right, right yeah. yeah so it's kind of like what you're saying it was, you know, a, money, it was be, a money grab hollywood does a lot of money grabs they'll, they'll do something make a shitty movie just because uh -huh. everyone's gonna buy it you know oh like, like yeah, they're it's gonna not, go it's watch a good it. title right yeah it's a good but title man, it, it would be cool if, if, if you would do a movie like that you yeah. know like authentic to kind of like the way yeah. we portray it or kind of because I, I guess there's many different variations of la llorona right yeah. but something similar like bloody to bloody mary right in yeah. spanish bloody mary in a way yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That she's got her own legend you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah bro a lot of films that i you know i don't want to name no names but i have seen a lot of films where i'm like man i mean that could have been much better dog yeah that could have been way better, one, like one of the films one of the films uh, it's probably one of the ones you don't want to name but like okay tack uh, not, uh what is it called uh, training day good ass fucking movie uh, end of watch good ass movie it's from the same director but then they come out with that bullshit fucking tax collector uh, big disappointment man <laughs> <laughs> big fucking disappointment man. it was a disappointment homie and and you know what i mean that that kind of like i supported it the homie scar was in it i, I bought yeah. it i supported I, that shit but it was like man it's just like it's more to be desi desired yeah, you know at the end of the film it's like what's what's the point of watching it everyone's dead yeah. And the best character died, and then I feel like the casting. Shia LaBeouf died right yeah, away, homie. I, I feel like the casting shit. was. Uh, Shia LaBeouf was. Uh, they did good with the casting. They did good with the wife. Conejo, I like Conejo. I feel like the the main the main guy though, he probably would have been good for another one. I, the main guy that played the what is the guy? Wicked's son. Son, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I think that was good. Good casting. Was uh, was this a? I, you know, I feel a little a little awkward because like I've was, never seen like this was, movie. I feel, so. like, I feel like he was a little too soft for the part, and he yeah. didn't have that cholo. I, I yeah, he was that. soft, bro. It, you know what I mean? He was soft, bro. Yeah, yeah he was too much like a. They made him like a yeah. like a family man. Like we, yeah. we are family men and stuff, but yeah. you still handle your business. And then like and then I, I had I watched it. I had to watch it twice. You know. I think the part that got me is the part where he went to the Bloods to ask for help, and I was like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a big vato, right, if you're right. a big dog, you, you're not gonna do that. Right, right. Well, it's, it's, you already got your shit. It's, it's part of like Hollywood, no not Hollywood not understanding the, the reality, right? The yeah. But yeah. is this a movie that actually came out in theaters? No, yeah. okay. no, 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 no. It came out in drive-in theaters because it was when COVID happened. Okay. So I think that's why it didn't do that as good. It probably could have did better, but I know the, the if you look up reviews, yeah, though. if you look up the budget, they had thirty million dollar budget or thirty-two million. They've only made about one million, so they lost like fucking twenty-eight million dollars on that movie. But it's it's the writing. The movie could have been better with the a better storyline. Some of some of the, it had some good scenes though. It, it did have no. I it did it, have some bro. good scenes. You, you know what? Uh, first of all, uh, so we could interact. I could interact yeah, yeah, yeah. With, you know, like I told you, you could curse whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my, my opinion on that movie was like sometimes you get this this uh, rasa dudes to start writing or whatever, as you know. So, yeah. And they've never really been out on the streets. Yeah. They just imagine what could it be like. Mm -hmm. and you tune out with some movie with a movie right. like that, you know. And then the, some other times you get rasa that have been out on the street, but. They're kissing us to, to you know, right. they're, Hollywood. they're respectful. Yeah. So they, they, they whitewash the movie right. and, and you come out with something. Yeah, like that's it. that's what I'm, this film that I'm doing, man. Us, we're gonna we're gonna understand it because we come from that 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 street life. But a lot of people nowadays are gonna find it maybe offensive because we're gonna be talking the way we talk, doing the, the, the real shit. We're gonna portray how it really was. There was a lot of racism, not racism in a sense, but you know those fucking black gangs versus Mexican gangs. We're gonna we're gonna show the negative so we can show the positive. We're gonna show you know the good and the bad. And when we gotta show reality, we can't uh, sugarcoat it or make it soft. We gotta show how it really was. So that that's what we're gonna yeah, do. That's what I liked about American Me, bro. Like I liked American Me, bro, because they had like real quality scenes yeah. man and the, the 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 story that was written there and the passion and the and the the that the fucking the interaction yeah. between each other was fucking real boy yeah. you could feel it when i watched the fucking we already said the name tax collector yeah. it just felt like a bunch of bubble gum ass like yeah but like a music like video a fairy bro, tale fairy tale like, shit all right dog like like yeah. cool you should have had more raw ass like yeah you know it was kind of like a fairy tale like like if you watch it if you watch the movie not expecting reality it's a better film. If you watch it expecting reality, it's gonna it, it's gonna turn you off to that film. Yeah. So hopefully part two is better. I I heard they're, they're no. Making part two. I, that's what I heard. I hope so. No, I hope so. Because so, I feel like it does have yeah. a lot of a lot of potential. So, you know, you know, may, maybe if they did a prequel or or Shia LaBeouf still alive, but if they do it after that, I mean, well, uh, they killed I don't off know. everybody, homie. Yeah, I, I like, exactly. Look, exactly. I look, like Conejo's character, and I feel shout out to Conejo because I his character bro was like damn, I was impressed. Like, yeah. he, he brought in some like real passion and heat. Uh, 
I think. Hell yeah, I want to so, see. So, at first, when I first watched that, I didn't get it, because I'm like, I had to watch it. Well, I watched it twice, because the first time I watched it, I didn't, I guess I, I might not have been paying attention, but I didn't realize that Conejo and that side was playing, like, the Faisas, like, the, the people from over the border. Oh, is that what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, at yeah, first, yeah. I was like, what? Like, that's okay. not, like, Cholo shit. And then I watched it again. I'm like, okay, it's not supposed to be Cholos versus Cholos. It's, it's the, the homies versus the cartels. So oh, that's, that's what it was yeah, all yeah, about. And then it made a little bit more sense. Like, okay, okay, that's why he's dressed up in the fucking, the way he's dressed and the way he is, you know? Yeah. I think it should have been Conejo against Creeper to be able to throughout the movie. I think those are the two that brought that brought. Me. Yeah. I'm serious, bro. I think those are the two that would have brought something good out of the movie. And then yeah. too, that's another thing too that I didn't like. You know, what, like there's like someone's playing a villain and they play a villain really like, and you're like, they play the villain so bad you want to see him die, right? Mm -hmm. But they made the death too quick. Like you got to see him suffering a little yeah, bit, a little yeah. bit, like drag the death out, well, like. They did that right. to Shia LaBeouf, homie. The yeah. Shia LaBeouf was like a down ass. He was like one of the main yeah. hitters, and he got taken out like. And like, Conejo, nah, nah, Conejo nah, nah, like, was just like, they had a fucking, know? he had a thing and hits him over the head dead. Like, nah, you got to see him suffering a little bit. It makes the audience more enjoy that shit. Like, yeah. in, in my film, I can't give too much away, but you you enjoy the kills. You're like, oh, fuck yeah. You know, like some of them are quick, but the ones that need to be dragged out are fucking dragged out and it's good. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you, you got to bring in that quality yeah. of entertainment. Bro. Right, right. You know, you got to keep the, the audience drawn We're, in. I want to ask you a question. And there's no right or right, uh, yeah. right or wrong answer. American me. Blood in, blood out. Which one's better? I would have to go with American Me. Okay. I'd have to go with American Me. My film, my film, I want it to be in the middle. Like, I feel like American Me was too serious. Blood and Blood Out was a little too comical. I want like a fine line, like a Scarface, like right in the middle of both. Not too serious, not too comical. I like a, like a good good line. Like an action film. Yeah, and I, and I don't have no fucking, no budget like they did, so I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Like in terms of Hollywood, they had millions and millions of dollars. Like me, I got, you know, I had tens of thousands of dollars. So tens of thousands of dollars and other people hopping in, you know. Yeah. Hopefully we can make, like I said, a, a legendary classic film with this budget. And then let's say, you never know, what if, if it comes out, people really like it, and someone's like, "Hey, I want you to remake this film with a fucking hundred million dollar budget." Yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing like what I'm doing with this amount of money. If, if Hollywood made it, they would have already spent 10, 15 million dollars easily just just on what I've done. So, it, you know, basically, if I had a big budget like that, man, I would. Sh they don't want to see me with a big budget. Look what I'm doing already with, with what I got. You're having fucking helicopters coming down. <laughs> oh, man. People up and fucking, I'm man, gonna I, I'd have, man, I have fucking scenes with, with Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino with the homies. Like, yeah. oh, man, you, you don't want to see right here, Danny DeVito right here, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Use me as an extra standing That's in the background. Right, <laughs> um, so, Blood and Blood Out, there's two versions of it. <coughs> uh, the version that's on uh, the DVD, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people have that version mm -hmm. the version that i grew up with was the vhs mm -hmm. and that's the three theatrical trailer the and that three, three hour one right no yeah no it's I seen the like the three and a half hour one or the three hour one or some shit yeah it's di it's different so the one in the in the vhs mm -hmm. it they cut all the all the the comedy uh portions of it oh did they? yeah so it's more so, like american me like more so serious it, it it it's more concise so they uh -huh. have a theatrical trailer and uh, a movie i'm sorry mm -hmm. and, and uh the director's cut believe it or not I have the DVD that I probably bought it 20 years ago and I'd never seen it mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I just now found out that it's different mm -hmm. so I went back and I bought the VHS just so I could have both of them right yeah. so if you watch them side by side there's, there's a, a, big a, a big difference wow, really? I, I didn't know yeah. that I have to go back and watch those movies again. Yeah, the, and I think one of them was Miklo was trying to make a baby on acid face, which I, I don't think needed to be in the movie. And then what? there was there was one where um, Crucito goes out and he actually gets high and he returns. Um, they cut that out, out of the VHS, the, mm. the th theatrical uh, yeah. version. So there's like it. a five hour version of Blood and Blood. I heard, I heard, I heard. Yeah. I've heard. I've never seen it, but yeah, that'd be cool. Huh? Maybe feed me, homie. You, you start. I mean, I don't think I've seen a movie that's hit. Yeah. Like how. Like Back in the day. American Me. I think the last gangster movie, real big hit, it was like. Training Day? No. Yeah, I would say Training Day and then that movie, End of Watch. And the watch. Uh, watch. That was probably the last really good gangster film. After that, there hasn't really been shit. Like. I, I like the fact in that movie, well, no, not End of Watch. It was another one after, before that, I think, in between, where uh, there was a Marine who turned fucking psycho. Mm -hmm. It was uh, that white boy uh, that played Batman. 
Christian Bale. Christian oh, you know Bale. what's another oh, good Harsh one? Times? Yeah. Harsh um, Times, bro. Shot Caller. Shot Caller was good, too. Shot Caller? Yeah, the, the, with the Weddles? Yeah, yeah, okay. That was pretty good, too. I didn't get to watch that one yet. That one, that one was all right. It. Yeah. I mean, they, they ain't got shit, like I said, on Blood and Blood Out and American Me, but it, that, one, that one was uh, probably one of the last good ones also. So. Um, you know what, bro? Like, that movie, uh, Tax Collector, they brought in the, 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 the black homies, you know, like, and, and that mm. combination, right? Um, do you think, like, in your film, I don't know if you're doing that now, but yeah. you had to bring in that, that you know, yeah, we, obviously we, they're a big we, part we got of, some of, them. of the of fucking Cali culture. Yeah. So to make that as real as possible, how would you, you know, that that got to be tough. I'm yeah, no, nah, well, the, well, we're going to show, we're going to show the negative to show the positive. You know, I can't give out, like, the storyline or the plot line, but, you know, you see, you see, you know, um, some bloodshed, but then you see the unity and 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 the positivity, you know, towards like the middle end of the film or something like that. That's feeling, yeah. And and we already got, like I said, uh, who else? Um, shout out to Black Superman, which is a uh, big hutch from above the law. He, he said go. he's down with it. Oh, that's Little cool. Easy E. Uh, Little Nate, Easy. Nate, yeah, Nate Dog's son. A long time ago, I reached out to them on Instagram when I first started this. They said they're down with it. Um, to jump in and then. Uh, we're supposed to shout out to Pete Vasquez. He's gonna get me a big worm from Friday. Oh, uh, serio? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we were gonna get uh, Debo, but he passed away. Yeah, rest, yeah. In peace. rest in peace. Debo, so bro. man, if we were, yeah, if we would have had Debo and fucking uh, big worm, man. But you know what? It's because I want it to be like colors, where you see, people come, they watch for the homies, but you see their culture as well. You know, exactly. you see you see the the white culture, you see the you know the black culture, and it brings everyone together. Yeah. So. Bring in that SoCal culture, yeah. huh? and it's more up, money, realist. more more people to watch our shit, and then see the difference. And we're also gonna show how gang culture got away from its natural roots. So you see, like back then, I was schooled by you know real homies, you know, with real morals, real respect, like like the, the real fucking rules and shit. And and now it, how it's got away from that. So it shows like how eventually shit just it's all getting fucked up, you know, and and watered down. Yeah, and you can't compare nowadays to back then. I did another interview, shout out to a Street Post, uh Street Pulse podcast, Street Pulse exclusive. Street Pulse, yeah. To to basically what I was saying, some people might not have got it. Like I grew up in the nineties, that shit was you know, shit was gangster, shit was raw. We had fucking a lot of riots and shootouts, a lot of gangster shit. But as I'm growing up, a lot of that shit, you know, it got better as time went on. Like this shit was like I said, gangster, it shit was hard, but it, throughout time like even now like throughout the years it's just getting better and better and people think it's just crazy now i was I'm, I'm old enough to remember how gangster the 90s was yeah the p the, the gangsters and youngsters nowadays wouldn't survive in the fucking 90s it's like no no lie. fucking uh, back then busted, I mean, back then back then they had they had balls you know back to to, to throw a one-on-one -on -one. They, they'll see you man beat the shit out of these little ass kids and now these little little kids man they're just a lot of like pussies man they're, like quick to pull out a gun like me I put my hands up first. I'll fight. The last resort, the backup plan, is pulling out the strap. Yeah. And then that—that's—that's that's the difference between this generation and the last generation. Like, like I said, I'm still a youngster, but I'm old enough to remember the difference. So the the youngsters that are like my age are probably like the last generation with that. There's probably a few of the youngsters that still got it in them, but it's it's getting away from that, you know. So like I said, it's and then you know you go back to the '80s, the '70s. The shit was just. It, it, throughout time it's just gotten softer and softer and softer and more watered down and then the game has just got all fucked up so now it's like I mean yeah it just goes with like you know just the natural order yeah. of things you know when people just basically they're gonna move the way they're gonna move you know yeah. whoever and, who's influencing them I don't know shit yeah. and, and, YouTube, the, and, media, and the fucking uh, yeah you know what a lot of been snitching nowadays man all fucking recording themselves trying to get striped yeah, off snitching yeah, on yeah, themselves clout. you know like, man. That clout bro oh yeah. man like man people do the stupidest shit just for some likes and attention they'll snitch on themselves record them doing the fucking crime like man real gangsters they keep that shit silent you know they, they don't want nobody to know shit keep their mouth shut if, if basically how i was raised is you know you, you get away with shit you keep that shit quiet you don't put it out there and try to act hard because that, that's that's the most weenie shit ever you know yeah and and, and, for that one. and we fucking um and another thing too, we, uh, I kind of want to tell the story of like how gangs originally were. It was for more like a racial thing. The blacks, the Mexicans, the whites, they all, it was for protection. Everyone as a whole protected each other. And you know, then throughout time it got into gang territories and you know, fuck your hood and this Drugs, and they're killing and, each other. Yeah, Drugs, money. territory. So it, it, it's got, yeah, it, it's got worse <laughs> over time. But if you go back in time, there was more rules, more fucking like respect, yeah, more moral structure. structure. And that was real gangster shit. It was cool to be, you know, in a gang back then. Nowadays, that shit ain't cool, man. That really shit cool, played huh? the fuck out, yeah. it's lame. Yeah. Like back then, you know, it was, it was about having your raza's back, you know, and that's yeah. the difference between now and back then. Now, the raza's, 
you know, a lot of fighting with each other, beefing with each other, too quick to pull out a gun. You don't really see people having balls anymore, having a one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Because even win, lose, or draw, if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you get respect for that shit. All these yeah. these people think they're gangster pulling out a gun. That shows you're a bitch, man. You're too scared to get an ass whooping. Like they say on Friday, he said, uh, the dad, he tells him, man, you gotta sissify. Too scared yeah. to take an ass whooping. Yeah. That's what it is. I hate getting an ass whooping, homie. Fuck that. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather my own business. <laughs> but I, if I save that shit, you know, you save it for the backup plan. That's the, like the last resort, you know? That's for me. Like, unless they pull out their shit, or they're, you know, they're pulling out knives and shit, and I have to. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, God, you know, thank God I've never got jumped and shit, but I've always been able to, to, to be, um, have a one-on-one -on -one or even like a two, three-on-one. But like, as far as jumping, like where there's like five people trying to jump me and shit, I mean, that's never happened. So, you I know. I jumped at the club one time, man, trying to keep my brother off the security guards. He was tripping on them and them fools just whooped my ass. Dog. Shit. Crazy, homie. I try to get up and whoop on them, they fucked me up. So yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, you know, as far as fighting, homie, and you know, like, like you said, catching that fucking fade and, and being a man about it, like, do yeah. you train? Do nah. You box or, you nah, know, you're I, not a boxer anymore? No, no, no. I used to box. I was undefeated, but you know what? Um, I do want to start, you know, getting back in shape and shit. Like, I, I, I don't want to, you know, um, how do you say, toot my own horn, but man, back when I was boxing, I had fucking six pack, a little, little ass fucking kid, you know, to like a teenager, six pack, fucking just always working out on a diet it was, you know strict like in uh my brother was undefeated my my uh cousin had he was professional as a champion he only had like one loss my other brother was ranked number one in the u.s he only had That's one me, loss man. so i was already expected to fucking you know be you know be good in the boxing uh and i, I was but it just wasn't for me you know it, it, there was no fucking time as a kid it's just school and boxing just non-stop so you know i i, I quit the boxing and then I started doing music, and then the music led to the acting, and I'm happy with the path that I chose. I know. You know, it, sometimes I wonder where would I be at if I stood in there, but you know, like I said, th this is my path, this is what I chose, and I'm happy with, with uh, the decision I made, Fuck you know? Yeah. But as far as training, yeah, I mean, I wanna, I wanna start, you know, getting in better shape and shit like that. Like, I'm just naturally like a, have like an athletic body, but I'm not like cut like I used to be. So I wanna start, you know, doing some sit-ups, push-ups, just fucking, you know, getting getting good, especially for the movie. Cause there's a scene in the movie where I'm supposed to like take my shirt off and shit and I wanna make sure I look yeah, good and shit. So I wanna, gotta, well, homie. Be scare my <laughs> so I, I wanna get back, I wanna get back, uh, you know, to how, like I said, in 10th grade, oh man, you should have seen my shit was fucking like ripped the fuck up. So you I wanna, chunk them, huh? yeah, so I wanna, I wanna get back to that. <coughs> and um, you don't just fucking, you know, get in good shape and then yeah <laughs> there we go homie. What, what, what would you think of, you know like there's like a whole bunch of stuff like you know uh happening right i think yeah. we talked about about people how um sometimes people are are, are, pull, are quick to pull the strap right yeah, yeah. obviously there's people that enjoy uh fighting and whatnot right yeah um what would you think uh it's just like a hypothetical right like of the people that do enjoy that that yeah. fist fighting like Kind of like have an event where people that they like to partake in that like would actually like host an event of people. You remember? You remember felony fights yeah, of, yeah, of Con versus yeah, Con? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, you know, it would be cool, but then you always have to ask yourself, like, are these people gonna take an ass whooping and then just walk away, or or is it gonna turn into something much more? You know? Yeah. So we got a little homie right here, dog. Just looking for food. Little home girl. Yeah. Looking for some donuts, bro. Some donuts, homie. What's up, girl? Probably someone's dog. But um, to answer your question, a couple years ago, I tried to do some shit like that. I'm not gonna speak too much in it, but there was like some fools uh, trying to like talk shit, create rumors, you know, haters and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I called them out for a one-on-one. -on -one. Shout out to Toker from the Brown side. We were supposed to set up a 12 round boxing match, three minute rounds each. Um, and like I said, uh, to, to explain more the reason why, like I did on Street Paul's podcast is because a lot of these fools ain't even in shape, you know? So I'm in better shape than they are. So I want to make sure yeah. that this shit ain't going 12 rounds. Someone's fucking getting knocked yeah. out. And, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm very fucking confident in my skills and what I could do. and 
And even if they, they weigh more than me, man, they got no fucking chance. I'll embarrass these fools. So they're talking all the shit. I called them out. They didn't want none. But we were supposed to do it on the, because Toker was coming out with an app, the uh, Brown Side app. So he was going to come out with like a live feature. And I was thinking, you know, we can make money like that. Turn it into something positive where we could say, hey, Rasa, if you guys got an issue, instead of dissing, talking all this shit, just come together. We do an event. We both make money. All, all the fans will fucking pay to see that. They're, like a- they're, their favorite rappers, their fans, my fans, they're all paying money like a pay-per-view to watch it. Like a we do it. Shit, huh? Right. And then at the end of the fucking boxing match, you know, we, we, we hold our heads high. We got down like men. And and that's it, you know. And then we show the rasa. This is how you. This is how you're supposed to do it in a positive way. You get respect that we're not pulling out guns, doing pussy shit, jumping, all that lame ass shit, getting other people involved. Like, oh, I'm gonna get my hood. Man, fuck all that. One on one, man to man. You box it out. Get it in, get it out. And, and it's a po- it's, it. and it's a positive thing for the rasa to see. You know what? I respect these two guys for for getting it out. So I was supposed to. That was like maybe like six years ago now, 2017, 18. Yeah, like maybe like five years ago, something like that. I get. I, I mean, I, I would like to see something like that if, if it works out good on paper, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you yeah. never know, um, you know. But uh, I heard some, some somebody on uh, on a different podcast say that um, you know we're we're at that age now where it's kind of like that's like the last result, right? Yeah. And if you can't like you know like figure it out, you know, you know like a person and come to a conclusion, then it's just best just to kind of like you know part ways and stuff like that man. yeah i mean boxing is boxing you know it's it's a sport like that sounds i mean i don't know like for me i don't care how old i am like if if i see somebody that that was like disrespecting me to a certain point or or like let's say did something that was bad enough i don't care about 50 60 when i see him i'm gonna beat the shit out of him yeah. Yeah. fuck that you know what i mean hell no let me put my fucking teeth my dentures yeah fuck that hell no shit 50 60 years old i still run that shit you know that's cool but um yeah like i said boxing like you know fucking headgears or without headgears you you have you know protection there's a fucking uh, a ring guy so i mean it's not even like a big thing you know like when you do it like that there's nothing wrong with that. Usually it only lasts for about three minutes, right? Oh, yeah, it's usually three minutes, like three, three minutes around. Just, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, also, you could do it like like yeah. towards a charity fund yeah. or, you know, And, and, I, and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say just do it just to fucking do it and have everyone calling each other out. Nah, no. do it like, like if, if this person really fucking talking shit about this person and then they really got some beef. Like and they, some internet beef yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and they really want to handle that shit. Then, then have them two going at it. Not everybody like, oh, I'm it, next. It could be something that's that, like you know? behind closed doors, right? It's like, why, what's the need for? You could do it behind do- closed doors, but why not monetize it? Yeah, me, I would want to fucking put the shit out there. Like, nah, I whoop this fool's ass. You and I want the world shit. to know. Yeah, yeah, I want the world to know. And we, and we make some money, and yeah. I, and I'll give them props. I'll be like, you know what I mean? You, you did that shit like a man, and you know we we did our shit and squash the shit, you know. You make something positive out exactly, of it, Exactly, positive. Entertainment, you know. Yeah, like, entertainment, yeah. positivity, and then it keeps that shit off Watch the streets. The yeah. Keep that shit from, get, from getting to a level where you don't want it to get, you know? There's no reason to. Right, right. There's really is no reason to. do a celebrity boxing, dude. Oh, yeah. Right, right, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 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 you got no you boxing, see, homie. You know what picture you fighting? Uh, 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 there you go, straight in the pot. Yeah, go, 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 yeah, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. A trucker. Cholo you're both fit. You're both fit. You're both fit. Cholo Trucker. Which one? Oh, that's the one that fought a... Yeah, because they did it. A gunner? Yeah. Yeah, nah, but see, me, I would only want to do it if it was somebody who was like actually... You it yeah, like, I beefed it when uh-huh. I had, like... I would there would be no inspiration to fight somebody just to do it like oh this nah I mean back in the day yeah it's like we used to fight for fun but now it's like unless I really had an issue or someone really had an issue then I would get up all right let's do the shit and they even give each other I'll even give them three months to train like hey you yeah. get to, so there's no excuses like hey there's time to train yeah. you know we're hey. gonna do the shit right you know the homie what Chicano Hollywood he's got a nap. I mean, oh, shout out to the like, homie yeah, Chicano Hollywood. Yeah, shout out to the homie. We should have that already kind of set up. Yeah. Like, look, homie, if if it ever comes to <laughs> right, there's this little option right here, yeah. homeboy, and there's a you know a so, clip of you guys fighting if you guys so, want it, homie, and there it is. Who wants so, it, uh, it? yeah, that's the contract, we, dog. We got these two little dudes that we mess with a lot. <laughs> we really have a good relationship with the uh, uh-huh. G-Unit twins. You know. The G Unit Twins. Shout out to the G Unit Twins. I think I, they, they show me a lot of love and stuff. Yeah, they yeah, show me a lot they of love on uh, very dedicated on Instagram. Discipline. Shout out to you guys. Hey, man, stick with that shit. Stick with it. You never yeah. know. You guys could be the next big thing. They will, homie. They're going to no, be. They yeah. will. We've been, wow. We cover their fights and everything yeah. before. Hell yeah. They, yeah. They're, they're good. Hell yeah. Man. They're up there. In case you ever need them, they act too. Yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they act too, bro. They act too, bro. They they act. Act. That's and, good. And, and their sister... She's a uh, special effect artist. Yeah. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, she could put the, those cans in your face and all that shit. Damn. You know. Yeah, but shit, man, shout out to fucking Toker from the Brown side, man. Like we we had some dope ideas, you know. We had fucking uh, boxing things set up, but like I said, I 
I don't want to go look for that shit, but I have the fucking audio, you know, but, you know, to prove, like, that those fools didn't want them. And, you know, it, now it's already six years ago. I'm already so far past all this shit with this movie. Now, I wouldn't even, like, see, back then, I would have given them the time of day. Now, it's like, you get to a certain level where you're doing such big things, you won't even mention certain people or talk about certain people or give them attention because you have all these, you know, big celebrities watching you. You want to be a good role model. So now it's like, man, fuck them. Like, they had their chance back then. They want to do it now. They better step their fame up and, and fucking you know start yeah, doing a bunch of big it's, things it's kind of kind of productive yeah. right yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's like it's like me moment. trying to fucking have a beef with eminem that was not gonna fucking respond yeah. and if <laughs> you know does, homie, you see what he did to yeah MGK, yeah so <laughs> and if he does he but so, like you that's why you, like you gotta have a certain level of fame to fucking uh to call certain people out or whatever uh, i had a situation where people uh, embarrassed themselves on a podcast oh right? really yeah and um you know i i i, I never responded people told me why, why didn't you respond and i was like there's no need to. There, there was, yeah, there was no need for me to respond. And, and then the funny thing about that was that for as much clout that they said they had and whatever, mm. I never got any views from it. Right, right, right. So it's like for to me to respond. So I totally agree, like, yeah. what you said. It's kind of like fucking, uh, what's his name? Little Rob. You notice he didn't even fucking respond. Oh, yeah. Little Rob's fucking, what, platinum, double platinum? Like, I, I get it, like, why he didn't respond. There's no need for him to respond, you know? Yeah. There's not, yeah. Yeah. It, it, There's it, to it, two totally fucking different levels. I was way up here. Levels, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you, you I, I wouldn't to, respond uh, to that shit either, you know? You like, had to fucking earn your stripes first yeah. to get up there and try to face something. Somebody is already up there, dude. You know, like yeah. you got these fools coming out, like right off the back, barely coming up and calling somebody up there. I was like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, work fuck all first, that. Work first. You yeah, know? we got that. That's why I'm a youngster. I want to make sure I, I work hard. And I would never fucking self proclaim my sh myself nothing. I'll let the fans do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because everyone that has fans, like let's say you guys have a channel, there's going to be ch uh, people that are going to say, you know what, you guys are the best fucking channel. I like your channel. And someone's going to say it's somebody else's. So it, it's up to the fans to say this person's the king or I like this person oh, yeah. better. Because we, we, all, we all like different things. We like different different styles, different cars. People are going to like you for, for your specific style. So I got fans that think I'm the best. And I, got, I got people that think I, I, I suck. And that's how it is with everyone. You know, yeah. some people say it's Tupac. Some people say it's Biggie. You know, some people say, you know, Eminem's whack, yeah. but or some people say he's a fucking... I, 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 to, I totally you know? agree with that. You know, yeah. it, it is subjective. It Personal is, opinion. It, it, it is for the fans. Yeah, I'll give you guys this. Yeah. Are we already working on the second one? It, it's, on the it's, second it's, one? It's, it is subjective. It is for, for the fan, right? Right. But sometimes what, what people label themselves for their channel doesn't affect how other people run their channel, right? Right, right, right. So I think, uh, let's say, like, uh, No Jumper, right? Mm -hmm. They say the coolest podcast in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. How the fuck does that affect me? Exactly. Right? It, it doesn't it, unless it, you take offense to it and you're like, well, we're the fucking coolest. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't, right? Like, for me, I say I'm the best podcast in Long Beach, yeah. California. So I was the first one to say it, right? Not knocking anybody, you know? But that doesn't affect your channel. It's yeah, not a person. If, your, you, if you took it as a personal slogan. diss, that's your pedal, homie. You know, it, right. it, to me saying I'm the best podcast in Long Beach, it's like it's like a McDonald's slogan. Right, right. That's all it is. Yeah. Just to me, slogan so I could brand my, my channel. It's your brand, yep. The, does it really mean anything? No, it doesn't. Right? But I guess that, that's that's the way this, this business is, you know? And yeah. yeah. It, it's always whatever. haters, man. It's always haters, people talking shit. There's, there's people that will try to discredit you, try to leave your name out of the conversation, but... You gotta get, you, you know, what you do is you just work to a certain point to where they can't fucking deny you. You're there everywhere, everyone's sharing you, they're posting you, you're doing things that they they, they could never do. And then they just eat at them and that's that's where, you know, that's where it's fun. Then you like, yeah, motherfucker, you know? I feel, yeah, you I know? feel like a lot of that is just chatter, big dog. Yeah. Like, it's just a lot of like, blah, 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 blah. And, and like, it's too distracting. I feel like someone's getting down over there, you hear that shit? Yeah, hell yeah. They um. Hey, so look, um, what, what, when do you have portrait? Like, the movie will be ready to come out. I'm hoping with like it'll be fully finished. Hopefully within the next six months, okay. like fully done. And then I don't know how long post production will take. If that'll take you know a month or two months. But I'm hoping by the end of this year we have it at least uh, fully ready, finished, and I can announce, hey, this is done. And now we're putting it like in some in some film festivals or if uh, like like uh, Panchito Gomez and Edward almost work something out where it's gonna get distributed. So I'm, I mean I really want it to be in theaters. I really want theaters. I don't want it to go to Netflix, nothing like that. But if if you know whoever offers the best deal yeah whoever offers the best deal for it and i'm able to you know uh feel comfortable taking that amount i'm not going to sell it i'm not going to sell the movie i'm only going to do like a, i'm going to sell the rights to distribute it uh, the only way i would sell it is if they came with a gang of money and a promise that they're not going to fuck with the script fuck with none of the clips make anything different they have to take it as it is 
Okay, so that, that, that's pretty cool. Um, so we, we're portraying our second issue for around April. Yeah. If if one, you know, like you a little, so we could promote your. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put it right there. We're working on distribution on this. Well, I'm working on distribution for this. Well, like so a picture, a freeze frame, or what do you want? Uh, no, no. I say I'm telling you, it's like so. I'm, I'm working on distribution for this. Right. So, you know, it'll be around. It'll get. It'll get around. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About a little bit. You know. Yeah, hey, yeah. So, so you guys you guys make this this magazine right here yourself it's funny because i was thinking of doing the exact same magazine Good, <laughs> you already did huh? <laughs> no, hey, man, we're doing an interview here i'm right. just kidding man this is a great right, idea right. man uh, big pro big props to you guys man this is awesome man because we have so much content you know and and that's like you say you know we, we jump Face right there because and this, uh, this is good because this is different, you know. This is different now. Everyone's doing podcasts, everyone's doing YouTubes, but not too many people are doing. I haven't seen anyone else doing a magazine, but like I think one other person from Texas has me on a magazine, it's a prison magazine. Like for uh, they have it in uh, fuck, what is it called? Um, prison? yeah, but there's, there's a fucking name, I forgot what she said. Basically, like in all in all the prisons, it's a it's a national uh, thing in all all the jails and prisons. It's a magazine, um, like a newsletter and shit. Yeah, so that's the only other magazine I know that's doing shit like on Rasa. So this is good. We need more of this. Yeah, well, it's I mean, different. It's it's something that you know. And then you you're gonna inspire other people. You're gonna see other people coming out with magazines. Yeah, that's fine. That so you know, and sometimes they might give you credit, and sometimes they might they might not. But you know what? You started something, you know. So that's that's good. Fifty bucks a piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like so. So that's if if you like put something out, you know. Like yeah, yeah. By April, shoot a little. Yeah, whenever, uh, man. What whenever. You say about the movie, a picture, and yeah. we'll put it out there. Now I got it. I got you, man. Thank you. you know? And same thing with you. Uh, uh, tacos are workout, you know. Like. Yeah, man. I'll put a little ad right here. I already started working on the next one, you know. Uh, and now uh, it's anything like say any uh. Anybody that, that I know, one person I think is on your movie, mm -hmm. a female from around the Saw the movie, or, or no, I think she's gonna come out. I think she's oh, okay, she, okay, she gave her a part of it. right, right, right. But I don't know if you're okay, like, like saying, you know, like letting people know oh, this person's gonna be in. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, you, you can say it. No, I don't know you because I don't want to say Oh, there's it. so many, there's so many different people, man. There's so many fucking people that you know, I'd, I wouldn't even know who you're talking about because there's a lot of, a lot of females, a lot of, a lot of homies, everyone's in the film. All but right. just shout out to everyone, man. Thank you guys for the interview. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, man. you know what? That's yeah, how we homie. do this shit. Chicano rap ain't dead, homie. Yup. Chicano ain't dead. Fuck the haters. No haters, baby. Just up. Just little haters, homie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just little haters. something before we finish? Let's What's up? Uh, get in the picture, homie. Big boy. Right, we're gonna be a, we're gonna be on season three of Winning Time. Catch us at Warner Brothers. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. Wrap it up.